Welcome to Talk Me Healthy. Each show, we invite a guest to explore a topic related to healthy living. They share their expertise and personal stories, and we learn from them how they turn their passion and knowledge into practical tips that you can use now to improve your health. I'm your host, Sherry Keating, founder of Diabetes Care Consulting. My goal is that each show you will hear something that will motivate you to make a small but significant change towards living a healthier and happier life. Hello and welcome to Talk Me Healthy. My name is Sherry Keating and I'm your host. Today's show we are going to be talking about Ageless Grace, a brain health fitness program. And I've invited Maria Skinner. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I want to tell you a little bit about Maria. She is the owner of Starfish Dance and Yoga in West Concord, B-Soul Dance Practitioner, former Nia White Belt Trainer, and Certified Ageless Grace Trainer and Educator. Well, that's quite the credentials. What does all of that mean? Well, the link between them all is that I really love movement as a transformational practice. And so I've been dancing my whole life. And at some point, I realized that I was really happy when I was dancing. It was a real emotional um, link that I made. And so then I I decided that I wanted to share that with other people. And the first thing that really came up for me was the Nia technique, um, which is a blend of martial arts, dance, and yoga. That's what I was training. I was training people to do that for a while. Um, It's a dance of choosing joy and choosing to stay in the body. And so this whole exploration around embodiment and also I love music, it's just what's kept me exploring all these different movement forms. And the beautiful thing about the Nia technique too, which is um, called fusion fitness, but it really, it's a blend of martial arts, dance, and yoga. So it gives people access to more of themselves. You hmm. know, I can play with the fierce part of myself or the very lighthearted part of myself or the, um, the show off or in modern dance, we explore playing with the emotional body and the body. So there's the sadness and then happiness and the body's expressing all that. So that led me to Ageless Grace, partly because Denise Medved, who created Ageless Grace, was also a Nia trainer. And she decided she wanted to create some kind of movement practice for people um, to change the face of aging in America, that's really the mission of Ageless Grace. Okay. And I totally resonated with that. You know, I just feel like being in a body, you know, they're saying lately that one of the reasons um, why the brain exists, you know, the reason for the brain is to show us how to move in the world. You know, so we've got all these ideas about, oh, our brains, our minds, you know, we write books and symphonies and really for the animal body, The brain is here to help us move, so it works together. The more we move, the healthier our brain is, and the healthier our brain is, the more we can move. So so it's about brain fitness for any age. It's for any age. It was specifically developed for an aging population. Okay. Because um, when you ask people now what is the your greatest concern getting older, it used to be heart disease and cancer, and now it's um, cognitive decline. Right. So Denise Medved, who created Ageless Grace, she had a mom who um, who passed away with Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. and her dad was this incredible bodybuilder, and he lived to be in his nineties and like super strong, totally you know, there. And so there's different factors, you know, there's genetic, there's Mm -hmm. health factors. I'm sure you know a lot from working with diabetes Mm -hmm. that it's all about the choices that we make every day in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But they they have found, and the latest studies really do point to um, not just exercise, but exercise that activates the brain in specific ways can help keep us both physically younger um, and mentally younger. 
So it's learning something new, what I always tell my patients. And when I speak, I always say we need every day to learn something new. Something new. Because it keeps our brain firing new neurons so that we Absolutely. have our brain and our memory and learning part of the brain actually can grow. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, absolutely. And in Asia's Grace, we say, so some of the tools that we'll play with, there's 21 tools of lifelong comfort and ease because we want to address the body too. Um, they are things that we might know how to do, but we do them in different ways or that we've never done before. And it's all really using the imagination. Um, we're sitting in a chair. So mm -hmm. if I say we're going to go swim across Walden Pond, we're obviously not in there, but using the imagination and then using our bodies to, to do what we say we are doing because the brain doesn't know the difference, the, whether it's actually happening or not. So the neurons are still firing. And that's really the key, right? So this whole, um, the aging connection with ageless grace, it's really to keep the brain firing so that we can remember and learn lifelong. Lifelong, yeah. Well, neuroplasticity, mm -hmm. that's where this sort of So explain that it. term. That's a, a term that people use, but I'm not sure everyone understands. Right, so I'll just, you can look it up in the dictionary and there's different definitions depending on what layer of um, scholar is looking at it. But from the ageless grace perspective, neuroplasticity really means the ability of the brain to change itself, okay? And so we used to think, and this was in all the textbooks, that the brain doesn't change, we just go downhill, yeah. right? And now that's totally um, debunked. We can continue creating new neural pathways until the day that we mm -hmm. I love all your little... <laughs> right, we're out of here. Um, but nonetheless, <laughs> the brain can keep learning and growing. And it's it's interesting because a lot of what happens is people stop moving as much and then that slows down their brain and then their brain slows down so they're not moving as much. So there's this sort of cascade that happens mm -hmm. that we term aging, but it's based on choices. And if you go to other cultures where people move for their whole lives, so for instance, one movement form that I think um, is wonderful is Tai Chi, mm -hmm. especially for an older population is, you know, you see people in China that are doing Tai Chi until their 90s, they're 100-year-old people, they're all still getting together in, the, in wherever they practice together and, and moving. And so why, why would it happen there and not here? And a lot of what happens here is we start sitting in chairs, we don't move as much, and then the less we move, the less we want to move, and the less we have the impulse. So it's really mind-body connection and keeping Absolutely. our body moving keeps our mind growing. Yes, yes. And then specifically in Ageless Grace, we want to address the five functions of the, of the brain that are necessary to keep everything moving and flowing. So we have, um, we have a, an acronym, SMAC. So the first one is strategic planning. Strategic planning is how to get my body from one place to another. Okay. Um, so if I was learning a dance step, that's why they say dancers, um, their brains are a lot more active and um, healthier than people who don't dance. They say dance is definitely something that we should be doing um, if we want to keep our brains nice and And how fit. do you train your body to be coordinated to dance? Because I am so uncoordinated. Well, so here's strategic <laughs> planning, right? How do you get from? So if I said to you, all right, look, we're going to pick up our right leg, and you're going to do it. Do it with me. You're going to okay. pick up your right leg, and then you're going to pick up your left leg, and then you're going to put down your right leg, and then you're going to put down your left leg. It's that simple. It's that simple. I mean, that you know, we can make it really complex, mm -hmm. but we don't have to. Um, so and just that doing right there this strategic. is going to fire yeah. neurons in my brain well, you just and create to do new pathways? Well, you something you haven't done before, right? I mean, okay, so let's do it again. Okay. Pick up your right leg. Pick up your left leg. Now wiggle your right foot, and then wiggle your left, and I hope not to kick you, and then let's take our feet and clap them together, and then let's put them down. Okay, so like, I don't know if you've ever done that before, and it almost doesn't matter, but the spirit of it is what's important. That's what we take in. Huh. You know, that spirit of play. I mean, play, play is really the basis of Ageless Grace. Denise says, um, you know, when, you, when we play, 
we are activating these neurons naturally. So strategic planning, that was the first one. Okay. okay. Stay focused. Yes. Um, M is yeah. for memory and recall. Okay. And so memory, they're two different things in a way. We look at them as two different things. Memory is, okay, I remember what it was like to go down in that roller coaster. I remember that roller coaster. Mm hmm Recall is I've seen it, but I've never done it. So like, I actually have never gone on a roller coaster that does this, but I've seen it on TV so I can recall it. Okay. okay. So they're both using a different part of, the, of that function. Mm -hmm. Then we have analytical thinking, and analytical thinking is breaking things down in parts. So for instance, problem in this piece solving. that we were doing before problem solving, mm -hmm. I could say, okay, now pick up the right foot, and move your ankle and now move your toes so that's breaking things down okay. into pieces yeah okay then we have um creativity and imagination which again are part of the same function but they're two different things so imagination is actually seeing images in our mind very very powerful and um so you know you have athletes imagining themselves winning the race and they're, they're feeding it into their bodies. Mm -hmm. um, kind of willing them to win that race. Yes, but also imagining it. Like, mm -hmm. I, if I'm imagining it, then my body's already there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but imagination we use in all kinds of ways in Ageless Grace. And then creativity is putting two things together that we haven't put together before. So imagination, um, imagine we're riding a bicycle. Okay. And we've got... Um, Imagine we're riding a bicycle and we're riding our bicycle in the water. So hmm. first we're just riding the bicycle, imagine, and mm -hmm. then we're in the water. Oh, I never rode a bicycle in the water before. I wonder what that's gonna feel like. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, that's part of what creates the neuroplasticity, the wonder. I wonder how I'm gonna do that. And then the last one is kinesthetic learning. And kinesthetic learning is what we do from the time we start learning how to come up from, um, from the floor you know we learn with our bodies so little kids when they're learning how to walk they're not reading a book they're right. not really getting instructions you know somebody might be helping them but nobody's saying well look you get up and then you put one foot in front of the other it's not cognitive it's kinesthetic right so you hold their little hands and yeah. they, their little feet start to move yeah or they do it on their own mm -hmm. you know eventually we all get there we all have that seed in us that we come up to standing um, some of it is what we see around us. So that's why it's so powerful what we surround ourselves with. That's how we learn. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's also one of the things that keeps people younger is um, traveling and seeing other places, opening the mind. Reading. Reading. Because you can travel through reading. Right. You can travel through reading. Mm -hmm. Although the movement part isn't there, which that's is great. True. It doesn't mean you shouldn't read. That's true. Though we have to include all five. Right. Okay. So... So Aegis Grace incorporates all of those five Yes. into each movement or just into no. a class? Into a class, ideally. So tell me about the class. Well, there's if different were, ways to okay. have a class. Um, okay. Usually when I teach a class, it's between 30 and 45 minutes. Okay. And, and it's interesting because I find that that is... Usually by the end, my mind is a little bit like, whoa, that was a lot, which is very different than when hmm. I go running. It's mm -hmm. not... It's not brain work. No, like, you know, when you're, when you're doing something or even, I'm not gonna say that HS Grace is not mindful because it is, but it's not quieting the mind. Right, because you're firing these Stimulating. These, right, because that's what you want. Yes. That's the whole purpose. Absolutely, um, so it, we, do, we do it in a chair. Okay. And part of the reason why we're in a chair, um, well, there's a few reasons. One of them is that it right away triggers the imagination. Because hmm. if I said to you, um, we're playing baseball and we just hit a home run, but we still have to run the bases. You know, why should I? It's a home run, but still. And so then how do you run in a chair? So we have to figure out how to do whatever it is in a chair. That's right away activating the mind. Also being in a chair, because it's a lifelong body fitness class as well, um, it activates the core of the body. And so, for instance, there's one where, um, this is gonna be fun, okay? So just <laughs> write your name with your belly button. Oh my. Wow. So let me see. You write your okay. name. Okay. 
I'm trying to figure out how I would do this. Well, exactly. This does. Wow. And then you're using the core of your body, right? I wish and my parents gave me a shorter name. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little unfair. You know, you guys would be like Anne and then like Jocelyn. And then Sherry that has all these letters. Yeah, you do have a lot of letters. I do. C-H. Oh, that. but I see how I'm working all parts of yeah. my body. Or if we were saying there's one called Rock and Rockettes where it's it's for the hip flexors and maybe, well, you know, so, so if I'm here, I'm using a lot more of my core. Yeah. Actually, than if I'm standing up and doing the same thing. And one of the things huh. that we lose when we're not moving so much is core strength. It also activates all the organ systems and the energy centers of the body when we're moving the core. So that's another reason. Um, we're also in a chair partly to have an even playing field. So if I'm in a class where, say, there's 20 people and two of them are in wheelchairs, two of them have issues with their feet, they can't stand too much. Um, especially in retirement communities mm -hmm. or bad nursing problems. homes, bad problems. Um, we're all in chairs. Right. Yeah. It's not like, well, they're standing and I'm in a chair. Right. So it creates this like even playing field, mm -hmm. like when we're in a playground together and we're all playing in the same way. Yeah. And um, that is the chair, the yeah. reason for the chair. So we use the chair even with the kids' classes. Oh, so you, you teach this to children as well? Yeah, it's um, Forever Fit Kids is um, one of the branches that we've been exploring, um, bringing into schools for movement breaks. Mm. You know, kids spend a lot of time right. sitting, yeah. a lot more time than I think we are naturally meant to. Mm -hmm. And then kids fidget and they want to move their bodies, and that's part of how they learn. And then suddenly they have to sit in a chair and they... You know, right? I, can you imagine what it must? Especially if they have ADHD and they have all this restless. My my, I have a little grandson, and they in their classroom they have like these little rocker chairs, that's so that great. the kids are able to rock when they are feeling very fidgety. Oh, that's great! And then rocking also calms the nervous system, mm -hmm. so that's beautiful. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. So I, when I grew up, we did not sit as much as the kids sit now. Now, now today, electronics has taken yeah, over their right. lives, and they're very sedentary, and that's why we have all these chronic diseases in younger children. Yeah, exactly. Because of being so sedentary. So this is great. So one of the things that they do is they bring this into the classroom, and some teachers mix it up with the curriculum. So mm -hmm. for instance, if we're doing something like a front row orchestra, and maybe they're um, talking about math, you know, and they relate it to music. So it creates a, a nice little things that we can throw in to bring movement back in. Not that that's the real solution. I do feel that schools um, have a lot going on and it would be great for kids to have more recess. A lot of the recess is being cut out. Right, gym, those yeah. kind of things, yeah, it's sad. Yeah, but anyway, so that's why we're trying to bring some more of this into that's the classroom. That's great. And so you have a studio, and you called it Starfish. Yes. So I'm very curious why you called your studio Starfish yeah, Dance and it Yoga. It may not be what you expect, but I'll tell you, it's um, there's a book called Starfish and the Spider. The power, I think it's the power of leaderless organizations. It's a... Um, it's also available as a PDF, and I could send it to you if you want. And it's all about how there's different kinds of um, organizing structures. And so there's the spider structure, and the spider has a leader. And when you chop off the spider's head, the spider dies. But with starfish, when you chop off the, if it, if it loses an arm or something happens to it, it'll either grow another starfish mm -hmm. or grow another arm. Mm -hmm. So. I was involved in a lot of work in the past where um, the leadership to me felt like it was not allowing for enough creativity. And so I was training teachers and bringing teachers into the studio and my spirit with them was always about bring your gifts and we'll share it with everybody. So rather than having a leader that is controlling everything, Starfish, the theme of it for me is more about creating organizations and relationships where we're all sharing all that we're learning with each other. And in a way, it's interesting because when you look at a starfish, it kind of looks like a neuron, you know? It looks like yes. that whole mm -hmm. reaching out and connecting. So that, that makes sense. Yeah, so that's why. And also, um, well, if you look at my logo, 
it's a flying fish flying through the stars. So then we like gave it another sort of um, reinterpretation. Mm -hmm. And how long have you had the studio and um, how long have you been doing Ageless Grace? Uh, well, I've been in West Concord now for about 20 years and I'm about to close my space and move my classes um, to the town next door. So um, I've been in the area for a long time. And I've been an Ageless Grace trainer for about four years, practicing for about five or six. What do you love most about it? Oh, it makes me feel so good. <laughs> it makes me feel so good. I love moving with people. I love connecting with other people. It's Sometimes I have to pinch myself where I feel like, wow, I get to play for a living and I get to... Um, infuse the world with more play. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting to me. Well, speaking of play, can we play? do some? Yes, yes we can. All right. So so we need to get comfortable? Look up my jacket? Yeah, why don't okay. you do that? We want right. to get more comfortable. Because when we play, and so generally I like to say, you know, when we play it's also nice to take off our shoes, but we'll leave ours on today. So let's have a little bit more space between us. And let's some music going because music also activates the brain in a lot of different ways. Okay. Okay. So this first tool that we're going to play with is called Front Row Orchestra. What are these tools? Why do you call them tools? Oh, well, Denise created these 21 tools. So here's what happened. She was at... Um, Duke University working with the um, nursing department there and they were exploring different ways to um, stimulate the brain through movement. And so they came, she came up, it took her I think she said like a year to come up with all the things she wanted to do and then it take, took her seven years to simplify it. So this is all very simple. Anybody can do this. You can get the cards and one's called dance party. Then what do you do at the dance party? Front row orchestra, what do you do with front row orchestra? Spelling bee, spelling with the body. Um, and so really simple, simple tools. Okay. There's 21 of them because she wanted to address all the different body functions okay. that we need to keep um, vibrant. And you do this within your 35, 45 minute class? Yes. You go through Although, all the tools? let me tell you one more, no, I don't. Okay. Maybe seven or eight. Okay. Um, the music is happening, yeah, so seven or eight during a class and you and I are going to play with just four of them today. Okay. Um, 10 minutes a day is all that you need to keep the brain stimulated. Wow, that's pretty easy. Pretty easy. So Denise looked and for the fun. minimum. What's the least amount of time that will still have that benefit? Yeah. And like I said before, I feel like what we're doing is not just, you know, we'll play, we have fun. It's I almost feel like we're infusing ourselves with this spirit that we walk out into the world with because then when you have the energy of play moving you can play when you go out to the restaurant you can maybe step in a different way um hmm. wave funny you know like not be so caught up in in having to do things in just one way all right well i'm excited to learn all right and so start, start playing i'm gonna start with um we're going to start with something called body math. Okay. Okay, body math. So body math is um, clapping and tapping. And so um, what we want to do here is hone our ability to respond, react, and recover. Okay? So fall prevention. But that's what's happening up here. So we're just going to start by counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna clap on the fours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. You're so good. Let's do it on the three and the five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, oh my let's God. for nine. All right, look. Getting it wrong is better than getting it right. Okay, all right. So this is fun, right? Because it's not Like I fun. said, I have no coordination. 
That's why those line dances, I'm not a, I don't get on the dance floor at a wedding when they start doing all that. No yeah. coordination. <laughs> well, so we would do this for three minutes. Okay. And change it all up. So sometimes we're tapping our head, sometimes we're tapping. And so it's all just getting the brain to do new things. Okay. Um, well, my brain respond, needs a tune-up. And to recover. So look, <laughs> response, when somebody falls, Yeah. Um, a lot of times they say that when older people fall especially, it's not because they're not as stable in their bodies, it's because their brains didn't have time to react to what was happening. Right. So then this is kind of toning that. Right. That's okay? good. I'm going to have to practice that yeah. one at home. Oh, yeah. For sure. I'm going to give you your own set of cards. Oh, please. That would be great. I have them in the card for you. Awesome. Okay, so this next one, we switch the music for this and do something gentle. It's called Gentle Geometry. And gentle geometry is one of those that, remember, scratching your head and patting your belly? Oh, yes. Um, it's specifically for neuroplasticity. It helps us create new... Those new neural, yeah, neural, neural pathways. Neurons. Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> let's see how this one goes. Okay, so gentle geometry. We make circles, triangles, and lines. So okay. let's start by um, make, taking the right foot and just making a little circle right here. Yeah, I'm going to move over for you. Making a circle. Okay, so take the opposite arm and make a triangle on the ceiling. Oh my God. So remember, you got a circle in the foot, and how's that triangle? Does it have <laughs> angles? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this it takes practice. Okay, now we have to go on the other side. Okay, so let me, let's try the triangle first. Okay, so the goal of this one, gentle geometry, is not to get it right. Okay, that's good. To continue doing it. Because we'll never get it right. So how's your triangle up there? It's good. Okay, you ready? Yeah. For the circle. Oops. Oops. <laughs> oh. So here's the thing. We have to keep trying, even if you feel like it's not working. Okay, we're gonna let that one go. Okay, let's do um. It's just for fun. Let's do that again. Let's do a circle with the right elbow. Okay. Circle with the right elbow. And then this is gonna be easy. Okay. All right, we're gonna good. take the left arm and just make a vertical line not bad right no not bad <laughs> <laughs> this is where my coordination issue rises okay, arises so this is like okay so just for fun <laughs> just for fun see it's not coordination we're learning something new right so just for fun see if you can make a circle with your belly button oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> okay so just let it so you notice how much of your body you're using yeah right and, and you're laughing, laughing and, and laughing. smiling and having fun. And creating new neural pathways yes. for gentle geometry. That's awesome. Okay, this is another one that's kind of similar but different. It's called spelling bee where we're going to spell with our bodies. And this activates all five functions of the brain simultaneously. Perfect. Okay. So um, I'm going to honor your skirt there. Yes. I'm not, I didn't too dress appropriately for Okay, this. so we'll just do upper body spelling okay. today. So let's um, spell... Um, body. Let's spell body with our nose. So big block letters. Okay, now let's spell body really big with our hands. Like you're making big block letters. Body. And we're going to keep switching fast. Let's do it now with, um, imagine you're, you've got a pencil coming out of your tailbone and we're going to spell body on the floor. <laughs> you got it? Yeah, I'm working oh, on it. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Let's spell body with our chins. So you see that as we're doing this, we're, we're strategic planning. Now we could switch it around and say, let's spell body backwards with our right elbow backwards. So. <laughs> yeah, you have to. <laughs> yeah, see, so. All right, good. Okay, I did that so, one. Good. Yay. So then we'll let that one go, and then we'll talk about that in a moment. The last one that we're going to do is called Front Row Orchestra, and this is one where we play instruments. Multi skilling. So the difference between multi skilling and multitasking. Ah. Oh, multi skilling. Okay. I can multitask. Multitask is your doing different things. The, the brain is being asked to keep track of different things. Okay. Doing different things. Mm -hmm. Multi-skilling, it's all going toward the same purpose. So if mm. somebody is playing um, a violin, they're holding it down, right? And then they're also 
doing the um, frets over here and then they're playing with the bow and it's music so they're keeping time so that's multi-skilling is bringing the body focusing on one focusing thing. on one it's making music mm -hmm. and staying with others right so that's mm -hmm. what the musicians do they say that some of the most developed brains that they found are in um, orchestra conductors mm. so let's begin to so if we just start listening to the music and this one has a very kind of hidden beat okay and then what instrument do you want to play first sherry oh let's see how about the flute okay you gotta do what you do with your mouth too right let's switch to the other side because in ageless grace we always want to be ambidextrous all right what else can we play trumpet Ah. Okay, let's switch the hands. Okay, I have a good one ready. We're going to play the harp. Mm. All right. Let's play one more. Okay. Uh, the saxophone. Ah. We've got all the, all the <laughs> wind and uh, <laughs> yeah. brass. Oh, we could do drums. All right. See, I don't even hear a drum. You have to hear the drum in your head for this song. <laughs> so see, you can put on music in your house and pretend to play different instruments. And you can play instruments that you hear and ones that you don't. I can see that you can actually get a workout too. Oh yeah. So I mean, after 35 moving. minutes, you could really get like an aerobic workout doing this. Definitely. Well, cardiovascular health is part of lifelong Mm -hmm. absolutely. absolutely so let's let me just end it with a we'll end it with a little bit of a do you do a cool down or in a warm-up yeah I, you know I, I, not necessarily a warm-up so okay. much but i do a cool down at the end i like to have people come down so we're going to do one more okay um and this is um just to kind of show you the cardio potential in it so we're just going to do this kicking here kicking okay i'm going to go this way yeah, okay, okay let's reach up with the same leg same arm so this one, Rocking Rockettes or Rocking Rocky, is one that is really about the hip flexor, but also upper and lower body coordination is one of the secondary benefits. Okay, then just like that, you're gonna do opposite arm and opposite foot. Got it? Oh, yeah. you look great, you look great. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, now we can let that go. I know, we're not quite dressed for it today. But, um, so yes, yeah, so it is cardiovascular. It's also got an interval component. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. um, heard about, you know, interval, interval training. Yeah. Like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and so it's got an interval so component. So it slows down, it. speeds up, slows down, speeds up. Yes. And okay. then also it's got that flexibility where we only spend about three minutes on each tool. Okay. So we're asking the brain to do this and the body to do this. And then we're going over here and doing this. And then we're going over here and doing that. So the interval isn't only happening um, for the heart physically but it's also for the brain. And then also it's got a really playful, yeah. emotional mm -hmm. component to it. What I find at the end of classes is people feel more connected. They feel more, um, they feel like they've just had an experience together. Mm -hmm. And because we do, sometimes we build a birdhouse or we go surfing in Hawaii, you, you know, all these things that we've done it in the imagination, but it has that sense of, um, camaraderie and and it feels like a stress reducer too oh of course. i mean it yes. just it's fine you kind of forget about your your what you're going through at that time and you're just letting your body go yes. and just in your mind go and just Absolutely. relaxing and having fun and it really trips people up their stories you know people have a lot of stories around their bodies mm -hmm. as we all go through life and we have mm -hmm. things going on right but for instance there's um um, a story that my co-trainer Amy always tells about somebody who came to class and said, I can do everything you want, but I just can't move my neck. And so Amy said, okay, you don't have to move your neck. We never tell people what to do with their bodies. We sort of take the lead by mm -hmm. saying like, here we are, we're all going on an adventure. And so at one point she was doing the spelling and she said, okay, everybody spell your name with your nose. And she was totally moving her neck. Interesting. Yeah. So it was like a, a 
it wasn't a physiological problem. It was more of a I don't know specifically, block. but what I do know is that a lot of times we have ideas in our minds about what our bodies mm-hmm. can and can't mm-hmm. do. But when we get out of the story and just play, then yeah. we could actually do a lot more than we thought. Mm-hmm. And so this is the brain creating new neural pathways in the moment. So this is fascinating. I it totally really would love to take a class. Yeah. And so I can just, so how do I reach, uh, how do I learn, number one, more information about Ageless Grace? How do I take a class? And then how did you become a trainer? Okay, well, first off, if you want to take some of the things that we did today and do them at home on your own, you could do it right away without taking a class. Okay. Okay, so because it's so self-evident and so simple. Yeah. You can spell words with your body, different body parts. Mm -hmm. You can play musical instruments. You can play with, um, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, playing with your body. Where do you get the cards? The cards, you can get them on the Ageless Grace website. Okay. that's the other place to go. You go on the Ageless Grace website. And that is what? Um, www.agelessgrace.com. Yeah. Okay, so w- viewers, we're going to have that on the show, so you can check out more information. Yeah, and I'll tell you, and on that page, when you go and you scroll down, you can find Denise Medved's TED Talk. Okay. Have you seen that? On neuroplasticity? Yeah. I did actually yeah. watch that. And it's really lovely. It's, it's awesome. It's really great to get you into that space of understanding what it is. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. And on there, you could also find local educators, people in your area that are teaching Ageless Grace. Then I'm, I train people, Amy and I train people in the area, though you can find trainers all over the country and really Mm -hmm. all over the world now. There's a huge um, group of women in Australia. For some reason, Australian, they're like, we're so into it. Mm. It's fun. It's totally fun. Yeah, you just have to let your inhibitions go about your coordination because I was really, you know, oh my gosh, right, left, right. It it, it was kind of blocking me from enjoying it as much because I was worried about my coordination. So you have to just let that go. Yes, and also because we're not on our feet, coordination doesn't matter as much. Right, because then you're not at risk for falling. We're not moving in a particular direction. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And so I think that there's freedom there to explore in yeah. a different way. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so yeah, there's trainings where you can go and, and take just the seminar, which is through four hours where you learn how to take the tools for personal practice. You can also go through the training and become a certified educator, and then you can share it with others. And there's, for instance, here we have a, a big group of people in Worcester that have it at different um, retirement facilities. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be going up to Hanover, New Hampshire, and training a whole bunch of New Hampshire practitioners. Mm-hmm. And so this is lovely to have in any retirement community, but it's also great preventative for all of us. Mm-hmm. Even kids, you said. Yes. And their neurons are firing all the time anyways. So this Naturally, is just an yeah. added bonus. It's an added bonus. And, and it keeps them more physically fit, too. More physically fit. And I think it keeps them more focused. Mm-hmm. Because, see, you had the experience, you know, even though we didn't do many things, didn't you feel like you had to stay focused? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I had to keep my mind not from wandering, and my mind tends to do that just because I'm a busy person, and I'm like, okay, I'm always moving on to the next thing in my mind. So, yes, I totally am like, I don't want to look like a fool. i got to make sure i got the right arm, the left arm. Well, look, minds so, wander. You know, minds are med- made to wander. And, and I think but this just kind of trains this, it. So we train yeah. it to say, hey, no, you're going to come with yeah. me, and we're yeah. going to do these different things together. I love that. This has been really eye-opening, and what a wonderful thing that Denise has developed. And Yeah, it's, in, it's incredible. Now, so if I were to take, because I'm interested in taking a class. So if I were to take a class, do is it like a, a one-shot deal that you just take the class and learn and do the tools on your own, or do you go to this group um, on a regular basis? The way that we um, imagine classes is that classes are more of um, coaching sessions and places to come and get ideas for our own personal practice. Okay. Ideally, not everybody does this. We have 10 minutes that we set aside every day where we do three of the tools. So you could, if you had the cards, you could say, I'm gonna pick this one and this one and that one. And then you make sure that you put these away 
And so the next day you pick three different ones. Okay, and you spend 10 minutes a day on doing yeah. this every day. And then if you, and then the classes, do most people attend one, two, three a week? Or? It depends on where they are. So in some okay. retirement communities, they'll have them every day. And instead okay. of people doing their 10 minutes, they'll just go to a class. Okay. Um, right. I used that's to have one in West Concord where people would come once a week. Okay. And so, yeah, so like I said, I think that the classes are important. Mm-hmm. And just as important is taking the spirit of play out with us. Mm-hmm. Because playing... We should be doing that till yeah. our final days. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? It was such a pleasure to have you and to learn more about Ages, well, Grace. I wish me. we had more time because I could really become coordinated by the end of the session, but I'm totally going to call you. And um, so your studio, you're going to be moving. So Yeah, I'm going to be moving my classes over to On Your Toes, which is right down the street in Acton. Okay. Um, so I won't have specific locations for Ageless Grace, but... Like I said, I'm teaching all over the place. I'm okay. doing presentations at memory cafes. All right. So the best way to reach you is to go on your website? To go on my website. So, and what is yeah, that? It's um, www.starfishdanceyoga.com. Okay, and we'll have that as well on the show. So thank you again. It was so much fun playing with you yeah, today. I know. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, viewers, thank you for tuning in again. Um, I look forward to having you back next month. We're going to be, um, my guest is a good uh, friend and colleague, Tammy Pazaricki, and we're going to be talking about dementia, delirium, depression, Alzheimer's disease. So tune back in. But until then, to remember to live your best life every day starting today. This is Sherry Keating. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day.